I have done the impossible. I have brought together the old school and the new school. It's like I traveled in time and put them all together. It's like I'm putting Michael Jordan and LeBron James on the same court playing the same game. Like I'm putting Larry Bird and Steph Curry to shoot threes at the same time. But we're playing a different game. We're not talking about basketball or sports. We're talking about the mind, specifically emotional intelligence. This is what I want to talk about today. I have brought all the resources that I have had along decades of study, psychology, talking to people, experience, my own life, and I've put together Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, Jordan Peterson, and Daniel Coleman to talk about emotional intelligence. I'll tell you what, I cannot wait for you to finish this video and put a comment down below and say, wow, this is amazing. If anything, if you don't get anything out of this, I can guarantee you one thing. You will get in this content for the next 20 minutes, the combination of what people take four or five years in school to get and pay thousands of dollars to put their hands on. Let's go straight into it. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Well, according to these guys, I've put together many definitions, and there is no specific definition for the for the expression emotional intelligence. We all know we have different intelligences. We have mechanical intelligences. I've mentioned basketball, so you can shoot a hoop even if you haven't practiced for a long time, because you will remember if you had practiced before, you will, your muscles will remember. You go to the gym, if you've been in the gym for any length of time, you go back to the gym after a while, you have muscle memory. Your muscles will remember how to do it. That's mechanical intelligence. Then we have uh, intellectual intelligence, what we accumulate. A lot of people think that IQ means being intelligent. IQ just means that you can memorize a lot of stuff and put them all together. Like Albert Einstein, he knew a lot of stuff and then he put it all together. And then you have emotional intelligence, the ability to recognize, understand, and deal with your emotions and the other's emotions. For me, emotional intelligence is like a bridge. It, it's like I'm on this side of the bridge and the person that I'm talking to is on the other side of the bridge. And what they are expressing 99% of the times is just projections. They're not really, they're not being real. What's coming out of their mouth is, is not a real expression of what they want to say. It's a projection. And if it's offending the other part, it's very likely that they are dealing with something. If you have a high emotional intelligence quota, what you're going to do is you're going to understand it, you're going to receive it, and you're going to uh, recognize, and then you're going to find a way to regulate your emotions so you can communicate back. One of the things that Jordan Peterson says about emotional intelligence, that it is, it is that emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize others' emotions to facilitate your thought process and your actions. Wow, think about that. It's the ability to regulate your emotions, recognizing one another's emotions, so you can facilitate your thought process and your action. This is amazing in its own. If you learn how to do that, if you learn that the, you know, what the other person is generally speaking, it's just a projection, you can receive it, understand it, process it, regulate your reactions because it's not about your actions, it's about your reactions. 90% of the things that we do in life is just reaction to what happened to us. How we react will define the little bit when we can act. So if you recognize that and if you have high emotional intelligence, you can go back with the right reactions and you can you can actually enrich the conversation instead of just offending back or just just backlashing or just being negative. The works, the works of Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung study just um, studying unconscious behavior, they all become fundamental to the construction that we have today of emotional intelligence. But there is one thing that I would like to cite uh, from Carl Jung. You know, he, uh, he studied the conscious and the unconscious that is common amongst many people. We call it the unconscious behave of the corporate. Like everyone has got these common traits of bad behaviors. We don't we don't need to be taught how to behave badly. It just it is just natural. It's fascinating to me how they how they cross with our you know Christian beliefs anyway, but that's a subject for another day. So Carl Jung built all this in, in the works that he had, and then we came up with these modern definitions of emotional intelligence, which I think we should develop to the, to the brightest and highest we can so we can have a better life.
So I want to give you five practices that will help you increase the quota of your emotional intelligence. If there is a scale from zero to 10, and if you're at five, as soon as you finish this video, you will have enough tools to take it up to at least eight. Nice. If you're on an eight, well, boy, oh boy, you might reach the 10. <laughs> yeah, boy. And if you're on zero, <laughs> Oh, thank God I have come to your rescue. So you're going to make it to three, four, maybe five with these five practices to increase your emotional intelligence. Practice number one, the foundation of emotional intelligence is self-awareness. So oh, I love this. Gary Vee talks about self-awareness all the time. And as you know, I'm kind of addicted to whatever Gary Vee says, but self-awareness. What's self-awareness? It's the ability to look inside. It's the ability to recognize your limitations. It's the ability to recognize your qualities your strengths and your weaknesses the ability to know that you've got a problem and you know how to deal with it you've you've worked out a solution a way a pathway in your brain to come to an answer it's understanding your emotions but most importantly understanding what triggers your emotions when you get sad what's the trigger when you get happy what's the trigger so in the science of developing habits and we have spoken so broadly and so much about habits here i've recommended you know the, the power of habits by charles duhigg uh, atomic habits by james clear just one thing by um forgot the name of the author anyway i've recommended so many books and i've spoken so much about habits that i feel like you already have a phd on it however let me say this when you're developing new habits, self-awareness, it's extremely important because it talks about triggers. What's a trigger? It's what starts. If you eliminate the trigger, you can el eliminate the shots. Ooh, look at that. If we're thinking of an analogy uh, of a gun, if you eliminate the trigger, there is no shot. A lot of people dealing with depression, for example, when they go to psychologists, they will have the medications. Obviously, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not qualified to do that on a medical level. However, when they go to psychologists, my experience is that when they come back, one of the things that they come as a resolution is identifying the triggers. So if you suffer, for, if you suffer with um, anxiety crisis and you have identified that one of your triggers is being around a lot of people at the same time, what is the doctor going to say? Avoid being in a place where there are so many people around you at the same time. Triggers. Eliminate the trigger so you eliminate the shot. And you can do the same not only to uh, remedy the situation, but to overcome the situation and overturn the situation. Because it's one thing to overcome it, it's something else to overturn it. How do I overcome it? Well, I'm over it, I don't suffer from that anymore. But if you dwell in the same place with the same habits, the same routine, it will come back and bite you. So what you're going to do, what you've got to do actually is to overturn it. It's redeem it. And you, you put another trigger that will trigger a different emotion because at the end of the day, after all, emotional intelligence is recognizing your emotions and the triggers that start their emotions in you. So you put a trigger in place that will sh shoot happiness in you instead of depression or anxiety. So in the same situation where you would be depressed because of a trigger, you will find something that will make you happy. That's self-awareness. Some of the practices that I use to develop my self-awareness and increase my emotional quota, um, here is one, journaling. This is one of my journals. Um, this one is my prayer journal. I've got journals for everything anyway. Uh, you've heard me saying, you've heard me talking about the live concept, you know, love God and love people, inspire people every day, add value to people and empty myself. So I write on journals in the morning and in the evenings. In the morning, I write what I want to do, what I would like to do. And in the evenings, I write what I have accomplished based on what I had decided in the beginning of the day. There's a little bit of meditation that goes into it. Again, a meditation, something else to improve your self-awareness. But journaling is a good thing. When you write down, it's like you're articulating your thoughts. And when you articulate your thoughts, it's almost like you're bringing to reality what was just in your mind. You're, <laughs> let me use that word very carefully because a lot of Christian people are scared of that word. You're manifesting, <laughs> you're manifesting your thoughts. So journaling is a good practice. It's an ancient practice, it's a Christian practice, and you can use that to develop your self-awareness. Along with that, I would recommend meditation. Meditation is just amazing. I, I, I love meditation. I've got two apps on my phone that I use for meditation. I got Headspace, which is a guided meditation one, and I've got Balance, which is a yearly subscription one, which is really good. There's so many exercises about meditation. But in the market, you have uh, the app Calm. And again, I don't make any money uh, for none of that. 
I could have an affiliate link down there, but uh, it's just good apps that you can use to use meditation, guided meditation, you know, uh, or learn how to breathe. We're going to talk about breathing techniques uh, really soon. But meditation is a good one. Also, talking to friends, finding friends you can trust, surround yourself with good people. This is all part of being self-aware to increase your emotional quota or your emotional intelligence. Number two, develop empathy. Empathy is... Ooh, empathy is so difficult. I feel like if Jesus were to summarize everything he ever taught, he would use this one word, empathy. Put yourself in someone else's shoes. Live their lives for a day. If you have the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes when they are talking back to you or they're offending you, you, you might have something occurring to you in your mind along the lines of, well, the reason why they're saying this is first, they're projecting, and second, they're going through something that I can't understand or I, I'm not aware of. And because they're going through something I'm not aware of, I don't want to push the buttons. I'm going to receive the emotions, understand the emotions, realize what triggers them, and I'm going to regulate my own emotions so I can go back to them. That is a, a good practice. That is empathy. Uh, when we're talking about empathy, there's something that is kind of forgotten in the world. It's called active listening. In our days, because we're so distracted, we are used to listening to someone generally as fast as we can. So if, you, if you're listening to something on YouTube or Instagram, you just put on like twice as fast. And we're listening with the intent of responding already. We have lost the ability to just listen very actively and just waiting to process what has been said. It's like if someone is telling me something, I used to have conversations on a podcast that I had a long time ago. I planned on coming back with them. And they would, the, the guests would say something on the podcast and they were, I guess they were used to having just a flow in the podcast. And I would go like, oh, I'm going to have to think about that for a while before we move forward. And I, I have an old friend that used to say, why would I ask you to tell me more if I haven't been able to process what I have now? And obviously on a podcast, you make cuts and you move forward. But there were times there was, I, I was in the room for like five minutes, just like, whew, this is heavy. Just thinking and moaning and just mowing over what was said you know so active listening and a, a third practice when you when you want to develop um self-awareness is to practice open-ended questions you know open-ended questions are amazing a lot of introverts out there they might benefit of this i've said this to my wife it's it's there's a trick when you creating conversations with people the trick is tell me more tell me more instead of asking how was your day and they go, oh, good. And then you go, well, tell me more about that. Tell me more about your day. What did you do? What's like, what, what were the experiences that you had? Tell me more about it. And that's a whole nother level, a whole nother level, because that will open space, not only for your active listening, so you can listen without the intent of responding or at least answering or replying, because you will have a response, may not necessarily get a reply. There's a difference between a reply or answer and a response. You can ask me something and you, you will invariably get a response. Maybe it's a silent one. Maybe it's just my reaction, but I'm responding. However, I might not have a reply or an answer, meaning an articulated version of audible response to you. So I'm just going to relax and wait. And later on, I might provide you with something. So um, practice the open-ended questions. Tell me more about your job. What is it that you do that inspires you? Like, that's a great question. What is it that you do in your job that inspires you, that makes you fulfilled? Why do you like, like the why questions? Why do you like your job so much? These are open questions that facilitate conversations and that will help you bring your self-awareness up and consequently, your emotional intelligence. Practice number three, mindfulness. Mindfulness. Mindfulness is a way of meditation. I, I, I love mindfulness. Like I said, I've got apps that I use for guided meditation. And one of the things that you can do if you don't want to pay for these apps and if you don't want to be in front of YouTube all the time and if you want to actually learn how to meditate properly, uh, breathing techniques are really good for mindfulness. Breathing techniques. Uh, I'll give you a few examples. We live in a world where we're super stressed and super distracted and super on a hurry all the time. So when you find yourself talking too much and talking too fast and not really thinking about what you're thinking, you're not really thinking about what you're going to say and you don't know the consequences and people might be offended and you're just thinking like this and your whole day is like this and you get in the car and you crash someone. And blah. When you're going through something like this, here's an exercise, a breathing technique. Breathe in very deeply through your nose and breathe out. 
and you can do that 10 times. It's the whole like, uh, take 10 deep breaths. And if you do that, uh, you can do something additional with it. You can, you can just imagine as you breathe in that you're getting a shot of oxygen in your blood from your feet to your head. And when you expire, when you breathe out, you, you have that flush of blood from your head to your toes. So it's an injection and a flush. An injection and a flush. Something that I tell my friends when they want to start the breathing techniques and exercises is that when we were young, we had this thing, um, this song called Head, Shoulders, Knees and Toes. You remember that? Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes and eyes and ears, mouth and nose. And it's like, what, what's eyes, ears, mouth and nose? It's the senses, the senses. So your whole body, it's got senses. You see, there's a lesson in everything. Your whole body, from, a head to, from your head to your toe, has got senses where you can see, you can hear, you can smell, you can taste it. And, you know, fifth sense and all of that, but we're not going to get into that. But Or sixth sense, but um, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. As you meditate, you have that song in your mind. Like, in, like you breathe in. Injection, influx of oxygen. Oh, let me pause right here. This is really good, really good. Before I go any further, uh, if you have watched the content so far, man, you gotta subscribe to the channel. That helps the YouTube help, helps YouTube spread this content to uh, everybody else and people like yourself who are really serious about learning. So it doesn't cost you anything. Hit the subscribe button right here so you can get more videos like this. And if you don't mind, you can smash the like button. Maybe even drop a comment down below with what you're learning. So that gives us more ideas to produce more content that you enjoy. All right, let's go back to the video. When you're breathing, the injection, you breathe in, the injection, the influx of oxygen. 90% of the internal diseases that we have, not talking about mind diseases, I'm talking about internal diseases, physical diseases like cancer and gastritis and all of that. It's been proven that they, obviously there is not one reason that causes it. It could be genetics, it could be a whole lot of things. You could get lung cancer, lung cancer because you smoke or because it's on your genetics. We don't know. There's a bunch of things that could cause it. But one thing that is in common with 90% of the internal diseases is this, lack of oxygen lack of oxygen in the cells and the reason we do this is because with time we kind of unlearn how to breathe when you were young you learn how to breathe and then we sort of unlearn that because i've been a musician for such a long time in my life i kind of learned like i used to play the flute and saxophone so i know how to breathe but you basically have two breathing organs in your body you've got the diaphragm uh, your, your diaphragm, I think that's how you say it. It's, it's a little balloon right here. And you've got your lungs that can stretch and shrink, right? So when you're doing breathing techniques, this is, this is a tip that like really advanced people will, will, will get. Like if you're not advanced, you're not going to get that. It's breathe with both of them. Breathe at the same time with both of them. So if I'm doing an exercise on breathing in and breathing out, influx of blood, outflux of blood, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. So, in, and then I go head. In my head, I'm thinking this song very slowly, and then I'm breathing out slowly. And, and I imagine that the influx of oxygen is going through my blood veins and my arteries from your head through my shoulders, and extends to my arms, and I have my eyes closed for a reason. And then it keeps going, and then it goes all the way down through my thorax, my abs, my back, and then I'm still breathing out and it takes me like four or five times longer to breathe out as it took me to breathe in. And then the blood and the oxygen goes through my legs and my knees and, my shin, and, and all the way down to my toes. And if you do that repetitively, you can feel the oxygen and the blood just going. You can feel it pump. And if you do it for long enough, enough to redirect your thoughts, and we're going to talk more about it on meditation, but redirect your thoughts and all of that. If you do that for, a, for long enough, Man, you're going to clear the path and you can feel it pumping in your veins. You, you will have solved at least one common trait with pretty much every internal disease just by oxygenating your body every single day. You do that in the morning, you do that at the night, you're done. You're sorted. So, again, we're, we're talking about mindfulness. Breathing techniques, right? Practice your mindfulness meditation. Practice uh, your breathing techniques. So breathe in, breathe out, sing that song internally, head, shoulders, knees and toes, head, shoulders, knees and toes. And then your senses, feel it in the room with your eyes closed, you feel it. My eyes, I can see it. 
What do you see in the darkness? I can hear. What do you hear? And you 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 locate yourself like a bat. You use this, the the your audible ca capability to just locate yourself. You smell and you taste because the vast majority of the memories that we have in our lives are based on smell and taste. I don't know if you knew that, but your your brain is amazing. Man, we've gone so deep here, <laughs> so deep, so deep. So practice meditation, breathing techniques. I will have an extra breathing technique on our Patreon community, so you can uh, check that out. So talking about that Patreon community, if you've been around for long enough and you've seen my channel, man, we've created this community on Patreon where we go really deep in, ev in, in every single video. As you've noticed, like we've gone really, really deep. And when we do that, we have exclusive content, extended content. So the videos here on YouTube, they go like 10, 20 minutes right there. They go for an hour. You really got to take your time. And it's really good value. It's like very good information. I'm not just talking out of my heart. It's things that I have learned and they, they are proven. So exclusive content, extended content, interview on podcasts, access to merchandise and uh, the book that I'm releasing at the end of the year, like early access to all of that. So if you want to jump on Patreon, just the link is down in the description. Do that. It's going to be amazing for you because there's a lot of value there. In the world, in the world of distractions, I've got the focus right down there for you. So I would love for you to join us on Patreon. All right, let's go back to our video. So far, we talked about if you want to raise your emotional intelligence quota, you practice self-awareness. I gave you a few tips. You practice, uh, you practice uh, empathy. You practice mindfulness. And we mentioned a few breathing techniques. And the last two tips that I have for you, and like I said, I'll have more on Patreon, but the last two tips that I have for you is number four, prioritize your life and have goals. It's impossible to progress, to progress in life if you don't have goals. If you don't learn to prioritize, you know, you can use the Eisenhower matrix. I'm not going to talk much about it, but the Eisenhower, you know, the important and urgent, non-important, non-urgent, that kind of stuff. And, you know, like Greg McKeon said in his book, Essentialism, if you don't learn how to prioritize your life, someone else will. Whose life are you living? Whose expectations are you feeling every day? Yours or someone else's? You have to take control of your life. Set goals, realistic goals. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated all the time. And that will help you increase your emotional intelligence quota. You know, if you have goals of your life, you know what you're trying to achieve. You know what you're trying to accomplish. Have goals and prioritize. Do what's important to you. Forget the rest. And last but not least, man, boy, oh boy, how important is this? I feel like this is the most important tip that I will give you today. And not because it's the last one. And it's sometimes it's overlooked. It's find good friends. Surround yourself with a good system. We've said it many, many times. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. One of the systems that will be extremely helpful in your life, especially to develop and increase your emotional intelligence, is the friends you surround yourself with. After all, you do become the average of the five to ten people that you spend more time with. So like I said in the last video, I think, I'll do it again. Open your phone. Open the apps on your phone. And check who are the people you text the most and you call the most. Have a look at their lives. Where they at. And if you don't like what you see, it is time to change your friends. It is time to start a new circle. Surround yourself with good people. Positive people. People who are going to push you. Um... To finish this, uh, let me let me tell you about this friend of mine that I've that I have. Um, it's called Blindside. I think I spoke to him. Uh, I spoke about him last time. Like we, we've been connected so well. We call each other Blindside. Why? Because he's always covering my blind side, like in football. So you need to find people who are going to be on your blind side, who are going to be your you know on your sweet spot, but also on your blind spot that they see the things that you do not see. Surround yourself with friends. Develop the ability to share your life with friends that you can trust. Because when you articulate out loud the things that are in here, like I said, you kind of manifest them. So five practices to increase your emotional quota. Self-awareness, empathy, mindfulness, goals and prioritization. Prioritization? Yeah, goals and prioritization and friendships these five habits if you put them in practice will increase exponentially your emotional intelligence quota i do hope you have enjoyed this video man it's been a blast doing this uh like i said there will be more on patreon our community so you can jump right there you can subscribe for the amount of money you want and it, i mean it's affordable it helps us take the mission forward and it's just 
beautiful curated exclusive content that you will not regret you will not regret if anything you'll save some money on not buying the pizza and signing up for our patreon once a month all right cool god bless you have a great time and i'll see you on the next video on our channel